Hi everyone, I'm the Dallas, and this is the Art of the Human Body series, where I, a medical doctor, paints a particular bone and rambles about it for some minutes. Actually, I still don't know what to talk about in these videos. I don't want them to be classical video lectures about a certain topic, but rather for a much broader topic, which wouldn't be so boring and I would improve my talking skills. Any suggestions will be appreciated. As you can see from the title, that today's bone is named the scapula, also known as the shoulder blade. In this video, same as in the last one, I start with pencil sketching the bone. I did this one beforehand, tracing the lines so I can have a more accurate representation of the scapula. For this bone, I have to do three little paintings, so we can see all the important parts of the shoulder blade. The front, back and the side view. The coloring starts with a base darker color, so later I can have better contrast when I do the highlighted parts. As you can see, I try to do all the three paintings at the same time. That's because I want them to look as uniform object as it is, and coloring it similarly at the same time gives it that effect, or at least that's my intention. The word scapula, it is believed to come from the Greek word skaptein, which means to dig. It maybe has to do that the shoulder blade resembles the blade of a small shovel which is used to dig. In birds, the wings are attached to the scapula and maybe that's why this bone is also called the wing bone. After I did the paintings, I took a photo of them and transferred them to my PC where I did some color correction. I took my drawing tablet and tried to explain about the parts of the shoulder blade. To better explain the anatomy of the shoulder blade, we will divide this lecture into three parts, and then overview it all together. First, we will explain the surfaces of the scapula. It has two of them, the front surface and the posterior surface. On the front surface it is called the anterior or costal surface. It is called costal because it lies directly behind the ribs, and the Latin words for ribs is costa. At this front surface, there can be seen a concavity that is called fossa subscapularis, to which is attached the corresponding muscle, the subscapular muscle. The back surface, or also known as the posterior surface, it is divided by the spine of the scapula into two parts, the fossa supraspinatus, which in English means the concavity that lies upper from the spine of the scapula, and the fossa infraspinatus, or the concavity that lies under the spine of the scapula. And those concavities are attached to the same muscle, supraspinatus mu muscle and infraspinatus muscle. At the lateral end of the spine of the scapula, there is a bulge that is named acromion, which serves as a joint surface for the acromioclavicular joint. The scapula has three borders, superior border, lateral border and medial border. The superior border is the shortest one. At the lateral end of this border, there is a formation called the coracoid process. This process looks like a small hook and serves to stabilize the shoulder joint and also to attach several muscles and ligaments. Medial to the coracoid process, there is a scapular notch, which is a passage for the suprascapular nerve. The lateral border is the thickest. In the upper end of this border, there is a cavity which is called the glenoid cavity that takes part in the shoulder joint. Actually, this cavity is the shoulder joint surface where the humerus is connected. Immediately below the glenoid cavity is a rough impression, the infraglenoid tuberosita. The medial border is the longest of the three. At this border, they are attached several muscles. Now, let's explain the angles. As you can see from the painting, the shoulder blade it is shaped as a triangle, which means it has three angles. Superior angle, inferior angle, and the lateral angle. The superior angle is formed by the junction of the superior and medial border of the scapula. This angle of the scapula is thin, smooth and rounded, and inclined somewhat lateral ward. The inferior angle of the scapula is the lowest part of the scapula, 
and is formed by the union of the medial and the lateral borders of the scapula. It is thick and rough. The lateral angle of the scapula, or glenoid angle, also known as the head of the scapula, is the thickest of part of the scapula. It is broad and bears the glenoid cavity on its articular surface, which is directed forward, laterally and slightly upwards, and articulates with the head of the humerus. Now let's review it all at once. The scapula has two surfaces, three borders and three angles. The surfaces are anterior surface, posterior surface. Fossa subscapularis lies on the anterior surface. At the posterior one, we can see the spine of the scapula, which divides this side into two parts, fossa supraspinatus and fossa infraspinatus. At the lateral end of the spine of the scapula, we can see the acromion. The three borders of the scapula are the superior, lateral and medial border. At the lateral end of the superior border, we can see the coracoid process, which looks like a small hook, and medial to this coracoid process is the scapular notch. At the upper end of the lateral border, we can see the glenoid cavity, which serves as the joint surface for the shoulder joint. The medial border is the longest. The scapula has three angles, superior angle, inferior angle, and the lateral angle. And with that, I want to wrap the today's video about the shoulder blade. I wish that with this lecture, you will have a better understanding about the anatomy of the shoulder blade. Hit the like button if you feel like it and subscribe for more videos in the future. Also, I will be posting the lecture notes and the paintings on my Patreon, so if you want to have them, check out the link in the description. By subscribing there, you also support me to make better future videos. See you in the next episode.